I hope you guys are excited about the Thanksgiving weekend that is right around the corner. We have big things coming up in the market. We've had a, another nice rally out of the S&P 500, out of the NASDAQ, but a second week of further downside for the Russell 2000. So what does that mean for the markets going forward? And what's going to happen with the eminent decision from Joe Biden about whether or not to renominate Jay Powell for the Federal Reserve chairman or to go a different direction and nominate Leo Brenner. We're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about how it will impact the markets. Plus, where are we at technically on these indices and what does it mean for the market going forward? Now, make sure to check out my YouTube membership down below. That's going to give you all of my market research that I provide each and every day. That's going to give you my master watch list each week, my daily watch list, my most intriguing charts that I come across each and every day, plus all of the updates on the FANG stocks, plus Tesla and all the market indices. So check that out by clicking join below and you'll support this channel as well. The S&P 500 is up five out of the last seven days. The Nasdaq's up six out of the last seven days. But the Russell 2000, it's down six out of the last nine days. So there's a huge discrepancy going on here. And we're going to look at it on the charts here with the S&P 500 starting off. Incredible rally. Nobody's going to take that away from it. But what are we looking at here? We're looking at some major resistance. And every time it's touched it, we tend to have a sell-off of some kind. Doesn't mean that we sell off right away. Oftentimes, we'll hit it a few times and then see a significant sell-off. But nonetheless, if history is any indication, we, we probably are going to see some kind of a sell-off or a correction here in the very near future. Now, you take the cues. And it's had the same resistance level that it's been dealing with for pretty much the same amount of time. But the difference here is the fact that twice this month now, it has managed to break above that resistance. The first time it couldn't hold it, so it pulled back underneath, but now it's broken out for a second time. Be interested to see whether or not it has a similar reaction to the, the first time this month that it broke through the resistance, or does it just continue to sail higher in a fashion that we've seen from a lot of the FANG stocks so far this past couple of weeks. But here's what really concerns me the most about this market. And I'm going to show you a couple of indicators here. T2107. This thing is down six straight days. Now, what is it you ask? It's the percentage of stocks that are trading above their 200-day moving average. I just talked to you about how SPY has been up five out of the last seven days. The Q's up six out of the last seven days. Yet, the T2107 is showing a completely different picture here. This is the indicator again. Stocks trading above their 200-day moving average on a percentage basis. And it's down almost on a regular basis. And it's down six out of the last seven days and nine out of the last 10. So there's a huge disconnect here where 57% of your stocks are trading below their 200 day moving average. But it's not just this long-term moving average that we're talking about. We're also talking about short-term moving averages too. And you have the T2108. This is going to be stocks trading above their 40 day moving average. It's sitting at 49%, a little bit better than what you're seeing out of the T2107 with the 200 day moving average. But nonetheless, a majority of stocks in the short term are trading below their 40 day moving average. That means both long term and short term stocks are weak. And that's what you're getting with the Russell 2000 here. Look at this Russell 2000. This is your small cap index. These are 2000 stocks, a good majority of all your stocks in the stock market. And what's happened? These things are down four out of the last five days. It had a bad week and it's had a bad two weeks too. Not only did it sell off the week prior, but it accelerated its selling this past week. So what you want to be looking for here on the daily chart, are we going to bounce off of the support level? Back on November 1st, this was your big breakout level. This is what sent the Russell 2000 soaring. I bought it. I've already gotten out of it. I made a decent gain off of it. It's pulled back now to this breakout level. And oftentimes you'll see stocks pull back after they've broken out to the breakout level only to bounce even higher. So that's a scenario here. And that's probably one of the best things that I'm looking for going into this next week. Can the Russell 2000 bounce off of the support level and make new all time highs? I feel like it's a better technical pattern, better setup than just trading the cues right now at all time highs. I think this pullback is one worth attempting if it can show that it wants to hold the support level. If it holds the support level, Let's give it a go. But if it ends up breaking back below the support and trading there or trading even lower, then you don't want to get into the trade. See, you want to wait for some sign that it's willing to bounce off a of support. If it's willing to bounce, we're willing to play. But if it's not willing to bounce, just let the thing drop. It doesn't need to take us with it. And to further highlight the underlying weakness in this market, despite the S&P 500 and the Qs printing all time highs, let's look at how the sectors are doing in the overall market. we got 11 sectors, utilities pretty much flat. You also have technology. What has it done? Well, it's down three days in a row, four out of the last five, despite the NASDAQ hitting new all-time highs. 
And then you also have the cyclical. This is your discretionary, like your Amazons, your Ebays. It's trading flat, almost maybe a double top that's working here. Of course, you have the industrials. They're starting to roll over a little bit, down five straight days. Basic materials, it's down five straight days. You have your staples. Those are like your Walmarts, your Costcos, your Dollar Trees, those kinds of places. These are down four straight days and they're only continuing to weaken. How about healthcare? Even with the bounce in Moderna, this one has had a really bad month in November so far. Real estate, it's flat. When you take telecom, look at this, sitting on a major support level. If it breaks this support level, it could go much, much further, maybe even a, an additional five to 7% of downside. You have the financials. They have not done good at all. They're breaking below their 50 day moving average and also down five straight days and energy is completely rolling over and maybe even threatening to test this 200 day moving average as it's in a complete free fall with a 3.4% decline on Friday. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that because oftentimes when you see this weakness creeping into the market, it's only a matter of time before the indices are going to start to reflect that. And we've seen it many, many times in the past where the markets are doing great on the surface. The financial media news, they're talking about how great the Dow Jones or the S&P 500 is doing. But under the surface, there's a lot of stocks that are struggling and cannot find their way. And we've seen that with the Russell 2000. Until this month, the Russell 2000 traded flat to sideways the entire year. And then it broke out finally in November, but it's already starting to pull right back to that sideways channel. So we have to be careful with this market that we can't just fall in love with the FANG stocks and assume that if the FANG stocks are okay, that everything else is okay, because it's clearly not. Because when you look at these FANG stocks, you can clearly see that it's Apple that's holding this market up. And it's the Amazon that's holding this market up over the past few weeks. You take NVIDIA, it has done incredible. I mean, this stock is up 65% since the beginning of October. It was trading below 200 back then, and now it's trading at $330 a share. You take Tesla, it's the same kind of meteoric rise going from 800 in the beginning of October to over 1200. And yes, it's pulled back some, but it's right there close to its all-time highs. Now, how about the VIX? Let's take a look at it here. Two declining trend lines that has really suppressed the volatility on an ever-increasing basis going all the way back to July of 2020. And if it can actually break through both of these resistance levels, you may see an eventual market correction ensue as a result. But so far, the dip buying mentality on the end of season with the FANG stocks has kept that from actually happening. So how about the nomination for the Federal Reserve chairperson? You have Jay Powell on one hand, who was nominated by President Trump. And then you also have Leo Brainerd, who is probably more aligned with President Biden's agenda than Jay Powell. Jay Powell is already talking about raising rates. He's already talking about the tapering. Now, the tapering might not stop under a Leo Brainerd chairmanship. However, the likelihood that she's going to raise rates is probably going to be pushed further into the future. What does that mean? That means that there's a greater likelihood for some inflationary pressures as long as those interest rates aren't going up. And for all of the debt that's going to be issued for all these projects and, and bills that are being passed, there's going to be a lot of pressure on a new chairperson with Leo Brainerd to, to not even consider raising rates. So what does that mean? It means that there's going to be some more inflationary pressures going forward. So the market doesn't like change. If Jay Powell keeps the chairmanship, it's probably going to like that. If Leo Brainerd gets it, it's a big iffy situation. I don't really know which direction he's going to go. I want to say because Janet Yellen wants Jay Powell to stay, that he's probably going to get the renomination. And I'm not so sure that if Brainerd gets the nomination, that she's necessarily going to pass the Senate because there's going to be a lot of opposition to her, especially on her unwillingness of what is expected to be unwillingness to raise interest rates. And so if the latter does happen where Brainerd gets the nomination, what, what should we expect? Well, take a look at gold. We talked about inflationary pressures. This is probably one thing that might be worth considering as a buy here. I mean, you have some support here at the 171 area. As long as it holds that, this breakout is intact. That took place earlier this month. So it needs to hold this breakout level. And as long as it does that, I think this could be a good investment play with Leo Brainerd being nominated as the next chairperson for the Federal Reserve. If Jay Powell gets the nomination, I would suspect that gold may see a sell-off in the short term. So what have we learned here? We've learned that there's a lot of issues under the surface with the market right now. It doesn't mean that the indices don't look great. It doesn't mean that there's a handful of stocks that look really good. There are. But there's a number of stocks with the Russell 2000 and plenty of others. We just looked at all the sectors. They're all pushing lower of late. We're seeing breath issues where twice as many stocks are dropping as those that are rising on a given day. So there's plenty to be concerned with here because it's becoming a decreasing number of stocks that are actually holding this market up. 
So make sure that you're taking profits where the opportunity arises and to continue to raise those stop losses where you can and to be looking forward into the week ahead, despite it being Thanksgiving, to keep an eye out for who Joe Biden chooses as the next chairperson of the Federal Reserve. And make sure to let me know what is your... And make sure to let me know in the comments below what, who's your pick for the Federal Reserve. Who do you think is going to get the nod? I want to hear all about it and more. Thank you guys and God bless.